Welcome to The Well. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Stephen Kwan. I'm the pastor at The Well Church Mississauga, and we welcome you to our service this Sunday, August the 23rd. We're nearing the end of summer, and, all, and students of all ages and teachers at every level are planning to return to classes. You know, as a parent myself, there is a lot of uncertainty, and with it comes anxiety and fear about what may happen. As a pastor as well, I'm extra concerned when I hear about stories of COVID outbreaks because of church gatherings, whether they are in the States to the South or in Alberta or in South Korea. And so September, which is a month usually of new beginnings and fresh expectations and outlooks, it looks scarier than ever before. Instead of the beginning of an exciting new journey, it looks more like we're staring down a path that leads to a dark and scary forest. But then I thought about it. I thought about the exciting new Septembers and where that excitement came from. Did that not come from the anticipation of something new and good? And as a Christian, don't we get that excitement or shouldn't we get that excitement because of the anticipation of what God can do in this new season? And isn't that the same whether we are facing something exciting or whether we're facing something that is uncertain and we're facing adversity? That God is doing something in every season of our life and everything that God does is good. That's the definition of what is good as we talked about a couple weeks ago. And so I realized that the difference between fear and excitement is more about my expectations of what I might think might happen rather than any you know, premonition or control or foreknowledge of what actually is going to happen. And if that is true, then whether it is fear or excitement, I have to trust in God, in His guidance, in His faithfulness, in His promise, and in His presence, in every season, every circumstance, for every outcome of life. So whether you are approaching September with excitement or with fear, or it may be a mixture of both, let us lay down all of our expectations at the feet of Jesus, who sits on the throne, sovereign over all, and worship our God in humility and in confidence of what He will do in this service and in this season. Jacob and the worship team, please come lead us in worship. Hey church, good morning and welcome to Sunday Worship. At this time, I'd like to invite all of you to prepare your hearts for worship before we begin. Uh, let's reflect on the week that we've had so far, all the ups and downs that we've gone through. Uh, even if we've just been busy, let's thank God for keeping us busy uh, and keeping us safe. Uh, at this time, I'd look, also like to ask for us to invite God into our dwellings of worship, uh, wherever we are worshiping, whether it's at home uh, or in, our, in the office space. Let's ask God to meet us here right now, um, that we'll be able to give God all the glory and all the worship that he deserves. For our worship is a reflection of our heart's desires for him. So let's ask God to stir up that passion within us uh, to really give all, to give God all the uh, gratification and all the glory. So let us sing uh, with praise uh, in one body of Christ. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. Feel the King 
kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died That stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead was from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not need, shall not fail. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. And praise the Father. Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, and praise forever to the King of kings, and praise the Father. Praise the Son and praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, and praise forever to the King of kings. And praise forever to the King. From the highest of mountains To the depths of the sea From the planets in motion To the breath that we breathe From the womb of the berry To the rich and the poor To the dreams of the orphan Every heartbeat is yours You hold it all You hold it all
Every tribe, every nation Every country and king Every tongue, every language Every song that we sing It's in the roar of the in the wind and the waves It's in the glory of sunrise And the lives that you change Cause you hold it all You hold it all Thank you, Jacob, Jenna, and David Fu and Injin for leading us into the wonderful worship. Happy Sunday. My name is Hannah. I'm one of the leaders here at the Well Church Mississauga. We welcome you to our Sunday service that's happening through YouTube and also Zoom. Uh, you can go to our website, thewellgta.com slash Sunday, and you can um, join us through uh, Zoom where we see each other face to face, even though we're all uh, at home and uh, just worshiping together as one community and one family of God. Hi, guys. Um, and we ask you to continue to stay on in our Zoom uh, session as well after our service where we go into uh, smaller groups, smaller breakout groups, and we have some discussion questions and talk about um, some of the topics that we have heard from the sermon. Um, so please stay on. And one of the important uh, announcements that we have is that uh, as we're preparing uh, for you know children and also um, them, uh, the teachers to go back to school in September. We're preparing as well to return to in-person service. Um, that's going to start on the first Sunday, which is the 6th. And we're in partnership with Sheridan Park Family Church, and we have put together recommended precautions in place. But if you are high risk, uh, we ask you not to attend in person just yet. And if at this time you don't 
feel comfortable to coming to an in per returning to um, in, per in person church gathering, then uh, we ask you that you can continue to worship at home, and we will have the same kind of uh, quality um, quality live stream for you to continue to do so. So next week we'll have more information about it. So stay tuned. And thank you, Reverend Angie Song, that will be delivering us a wonderful message today. Uh, she's from Bong Community Church, and she has been with us actually from the beginning of our um, uh, church planting journey together. So we welcome her, and we can't wait to hear a um, wonderful message that God has um, brought us to us. We have one more important announcement and good news that we have uh, heard in 2020. That is Joseph Choi from our community. He got married yesterday. Yay! Congratulations, Joseph and Gloria. And we're so happy for you guys. And, and we can't wait to worship together as a newlywed um, as we go back to in-person service soon. Congratulations again, guys. Um, and now we'll go into the time of giving. At this time, we take it through e-transfer um, through the, uh, the wellgta at gmail.com. If it's your first time giving, please write your full name and address and we'll add it to the tax contribution for the end of the year. And now I will pass the torch off to David Tsang and he will pray for us and read the word for us. Bye guys, and you guys know it. See you next week. Hi everyone. Thank you again so much for joining us online via YouTube and Zoom. I am so excited that we are potentially looking to starting live worship again a month from now. And have, and I've been lying the day uh, since the pandemic started six months ago. Um, so it is amazing news if, it is, if you are like myself. Um, and maybe a little fatigue from online services um, and uh, just uh, wanting to be able to see each other face to face again. Um, but with that said, it is a true blessing that we can continue to worship as a church during this pandemic. Um, I actually want to quickly take some encouragement from the passage today. Um, for myself personally, this passage could not have come at a better time. Um, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verses 13 to 18, it just reminds us uh, what we are called to do as Christian, which is to do good in the world. And um, it comes from nothing else but God. Um, so let's read the word together. Um, but before that, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, I just thank you so much for this glorious day. Um, I thank you for uh, allowing us to continue to uh, worship as a church online and uh, for the technologies that we have. Um, and uh, we thank you for the word. Um, and uh, as we read the word together today, I pray that you just send the Holy Spirit into each and one of our hearts and just really move us um, and that we may hear with our ears and our hearts. Um, I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 to 18. Who is going to do you harm if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats, do not be frightened, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have, but do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Amen. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Reverend Angie Song. 
She is the College and Discipleship Pastor for Vaughan Community Church's English Ministry, where she's been pastoring there for 10 years. She's been a huge supporter to our congregation, praying for us and advocating on our behalf. In fact, we are literally able to be here because of her. And I'm not overstating the case. She was our interim moderator, which is like the main leader in helping us get officially started as a church congregation in the Presbyterian Church in Canada. She is a part of our story, and it is a great privilege to have her speak on today's Fruit of Gentleness. I can think of no one better to speak on what I believe is such a relevant fruit, a timely fruit of the Spirit in today's climate. She is a powerful woman of God in our presbytery, often dominated by men. And she loves young people and seeing them grow in the grace of God. And she is a master potter, or at least she loves it that much. So we ask for the Spirit of God to speak through Pastor Angie today as she brings us the Word from God. Let us all welcome Pastor Angie today. Good morning, church. It is such a joy and a privilege to be able to worship with you this morning. I want to thank so much Reverend Stephen Kwan and the WELL leadership uh, for this opportunity. I hope that each of you have been doing well and that you've been anchoring yourself in Christ through these really challenging and disorienting times. Um, I, and I really wish that we could actually be worshiping together in one space. But I know that the Holy Spirit is at work within each of us, uniting our hearts as we look to Him, um, and especially in the scriptures today. And so today we're going to be looking at gentleness, this really paradoxical fruit of the Spirit that grows in us and is cultivated in us as the Spirit is actively at work in us and witnessing to who Christ is. And um, it's a really paradoxical fruit, as I imagine all the fruits have been thus far. Um, but when we look at our culture today, especially with what's happening within social media, we can very quickly see how little we value gentleness in our life. Um, if you think about all the posts and a lot of the comments that we're reading, um, there's such a, a spirit of judgment and of rejection a lot of the things, although they may be true, that is being said, is said with such meanness, uh, with, a, uh, with a hope to win, but also on the flip side to destroy. Um, and when it gets really bad, there's even a sense of hatred that comes through um, all these posts. I think of also uh, the cancel culture that has really taken prominence in the last few years. I really believe we need to hold accountable those people who are doing wrong and who are wronging other people. But it's turned out that sometimes it's not just about canceling um, endorsements or speaking engagements. We are coming to the point where we are canceling the value of each other, saying you no longer matter to me, you are canceled to me. It's seeking out to really destroy and to um, defame people in a way that doesn't seek for reconciliation or for regrowth. And this is not to say that Christians aren't experiencing this within our own churches and our own circles. I think there's been a lot of thought into theological um, <clears throat> conversations these days. Sometimes these conversations turn into arguments um, and debates, and that's all fine and well. But when gone wrong, we've seen it also turn into division. We've seen it turn into rejection and even perhaps destruction. If you have experienced this kind of uh, rejection or judgment, perhaps been the recipient of just a meanness of spirit because you are a Christian, then you will understand what's happening in today's scripture passage. In today's passage, the Apostle Peter is writing to a church that is being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. In verse 13 to 15, it says, Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is good, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. 
do not be frightened, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Now I'm sure the very first gut instinct of these Christians, no matter how good they are as Christians, is to be like, hey, watch out what you say about my God. That's not right. And we, in our fantasies, oftentimes, I think as Christians, have this fantasy of like, I'm going to just prove to them how wrong they are. And I'm going to be a crusader and a defender of the faith. And God will totally be honored, they'll be glorified, and people will bow down in shame. And they will say that this is truly who God is. But then Peter goes on to say, in verse 15 to 16, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping your conscience, a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Paul tells the followers of Christ to always have their testimony prepared of why they have hope in this Jesus Christ. But whenever you share that testimony, whenever you share about your faith, do it with gentleness, with meekness. What is the definition of gentleness? Um, the Greek word is protas, and that in English translates to gentleness, meekness, humility, and self-forgetfulness. In the New Testament, Jesus says that those who are meek are actually blessed, like Peter said himself, because they inherit the earth. Paul in, speaks about gentleness in so many different contexts, but it's always within the context of difficult relationships, of ones that are hard to keep, of ones where you don't want to love them because they're either against you or they're annoying you or they're different from you but he really calls the church to gentleness. Other words that, we, that might describe gentleness is a mildness deal of, uh, of dealing with people, to be teachable, to be modest and generous, to be humble. Humility is a part of understanding what it means to be gentle and to be really considered towards others, lifting them up, lifting them up higher and before you. I was thinking about why it's so important to not only speak the truth in faithfulness, but then to also speak the truth of who God is in gentleness. And then this story came to my mind, Lisa Harper, she's a Christian author, and she shared this story of how in university as a student, she was in a almost kind of relationship with a guy, and <clears throat> she didn't really know if they were really in a relationship and it was really ambiguous. Um, but at one point, th this guy invited her to dinner. And so she was really excited. He said, yeah, I have something really important to share with you. And so she's like, okay, finally, we get to do the define the relationship talk. Um, he booked this exclusive restaurant. He bought her an extravagant gift. They had an amazing dinner together, she explains. And then he brought out this box that had the name of the most expensive dress shop in town. And so she opened it up and took out this beautiful dress that he had bought for her. She knew that it had cost him a pretty penny that he didn't even have as a university student. But nonetheless, she looked into the tag and she thought, uh-oh, should I tell him that actually this is not my size? It's actually a few sizes too small for me. So she was debating and then she finally says, so this dress doesn't really fit me. It's actually too small for me. And he said, I know, I bought a few sizes too small on purpose. Lisa, you're amazing and you're wonderful, but only if you lost a little bit of weight, you would be perfect. No matter what lengths he went to show her how interested he was in her, everything was negated by the very fact that he really didn't accept her for who she was, and that came out in his words. He was more concerned with what he wanted from her and expected from her and what people might say when she stood beside him that he eventually ended up losing her. 
And that must be what it is like for us as Christians as we speak about the love of God and the graciousness of His mercy and then at the same time we speak with such harshness and meanness but not only the way we say it but then we go and turn around and we don't really care for the people whom we share this with. The opposite of gentleness that Tim Keller says is a sense of superiority a self-absorption, a self-aggrandizement, that I'm actually better than you, that I know better than you, that it's a use of power that is self-centered and ultimately destructive. It's not just what we say, but also how we say it and the actions that follow up with the words that we say that speak loud. In verse 16, it says, keeping a clear conscience is how we're supposed to share our faith. And I think if we're really honest, really search within what's deep within us, sometimes we'll have to admit and repent that so much of our response when we're under fire and defending our own faith is that we're actually defending our own ego. We don't want to be on the losing team. And we, perhaps even deeper than that, don't want our own faith to look like it's, um, it could be so easily pulled apart. We're so afraid of looking like losers that we cannot have any space to show gentleness to others. Our pride gets in the way. Our sense of insecurity gets in the way. And if the opposite of gentleness is superiority, the counterfeit of, of gentleness is actually inferiority. And as much as they might look very different on the outside, they come down to the same root of pride, of self-absorption, of self-consciousness. It's just packaged differently. It's a self-absorption that we would rather become a doormat so that people could just accept us, accept me. Um, I'm more concerned about myself and not being rejected than I am about being able to truly share the real hope that I have in Jesus Christ, the truth that I have come to know and to recognize in Jesus Christ. Um, so what does true gentleness really look like? Um, the word meek from the original language was really used to describe reining in a horse or a stallion. It's the idea of a horse that's controlled by a bit and a bridle and that is a horse that is choosing to submit to authority. It's really not a, the people who are weak that are called to be gentle, but it's the people who are powerful, who have strength that are called to be gentle. It's power under constraint. Gary Thomas would say that gentleness is a strong hand with a strong, with a soft touch. And he explains how when his daughter was young, he would, uh, her daughter would often take his hand and squeeze it as hard as she could. And no matter how hard she squeezed, it would never really hurt him. It would be amusing, it would be fun, it'd be a way of just having, um, being able to grow in relationship together. But he knew, flip it the other way, that if he was be, to be the one who would squeeze her hand, it could really cause a lot of hurt and a lot of damage, but he never would. And that was his restraint. No matter how strong he was, he could never choose to hurt his daughter in such a way. It's a strong person who practices gentleness and not the weak. And that is who our Christ is. The Old Testament prophesies of a Messiah who is incredibly gentle. Isaiah 42.3 says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. And isn't that the privilege that we have today to know this Christ? He is infinitely powerful. He was there at the beginning of creation. He holds lordship over heaven and earth. He has a power of life and death. And yet he chooses to use that power to lay it aside and then to come to us 
in the form of weak human flesh. In spite of the jeering and the pain, he chose to gently and meekly submit himself to the Father's will on the cross, using all of his power and his might to stay there for our sake. He didn't despise the weak and the sick. Instead, he said, I came to heal the sick. I came to save those who call out to me and in their weakness say that I need saving. And then on that cross, he said a most impossible thing without the Spirit's power. Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. This is the gentleness and the meekness that has been given and afforded to us. In Christ, we see the manifestation of both the lamb and the lion, the meekness of the lamb that was willing to be a sacrifice for us all, and the power of the lion that actually saves us all. One of the keys to living a life in gentleness is to really understand how Christ's gentleness has transformed you from the inside out. How has Christ been gentle to you? How has he led you through the pandemic? How has he spoken to you? Perhaps like Eli Elijah, not in the storm, not in the earthquake, not in the fire, but in a gentle whisper. How has he in his kindness drawn you to repentance? How has he led you to quiet and still waters? When you can fully see and understand this, more and more will gentleness bear fruit in you. Through the Holy Spirit that is at work, you can now turn around and now offer this gentleness to others. I think especially during quarantine, as we've been spending a lot more time with our families, that we especially need to practice gentleness. Is there someone you need to ask for forgiveness. Is there a way you can speak with gentleness to those people whom you love the most? This is the Christ, this is Christ's spirit at work within us. And then how are there people, are there people out there who you know really need to know the gentleness and the love and the grace and mercy of God by the way that you speak and that you act towards them? Really, this is how the Holy Spirit is at work. It's in the small little things of today and right now, in the mundane relationships that we have, that we are seeing the fruit of the Spirit worked out in us. And here is Jesus' invitation for us today. Matthew 11, 28 verse 29 says, Come to me, all you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek, or I am gentle, and I am humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I think many of us through the pandemic, but even before, have been finding ourselves weary and burdened, exhausted, burnt out, and tired. And it's not only because we have so much work or our kids are demanding everything from us or studies are non-ending and so tiring. But a lot of it is because of our ego and our pride, our need to look good in front of others, our need to gain and gather and to win and to always look like I'm winning online. Um, all these things that we are really uh, grabbing at and, and searching for is actually what is making us tired. He says instead, look at me, I'm gentle, I'm humble. You, you can be gentle, you can be humble. Actually, when you are gentle and when you are humble, that is when you will find rest. That's when you don't have to fight for yourself, but you leave it for me to fight for justice for you. And you don't have to feel like you always have to protect yourself, but I will be your shield. 
you don't have to always work and your work out work your faith to gain the acceptance and salvation for me but instead allow me to save you and actually losing in the end is not losing death is not the final word but in resurrection that you actually will find the true understanding of blessed are the meek for you will inherit the earth. This is Christ's promise to us. It's his invitation to us. It's what he is asking us to do, to submit to his will, so that we may find true rest in his humility, his gentleness, his loneliness, and in that, that God himself would lift us up. May you find that gentleness and may you be so blessed to be able to share that gentleness with all those around you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have always shown us beyond what we can even comprehend or imagine this humility and gentleness. And Lord, it is through that we come to you in repentance. It's through your gentleness that we find healing. It's in your gentleness that we find rest from our weariness and we find life. Because you chose this way, Lord, we desire through the power of your Holy Spirit to walk in your way. Thank you so much for your grace. And thank you so much for this high calling. May we continue to share your testimony, share our testimony of who you are, but also to do it in such a way that shows your love and your meekness to all. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we conclude this service, may you go in the blessing of gentleness this week. So, well, church family, may you trust in the sovereignty of God, which gives us cause for gentleness and meekness. May you imitate our gentle King, Jesus Christ, who is the model of humility and who offers his gentle yoke to us, who are tired and weary. May the Spirit bear the fruit of gentleness in you as we inherit the earth by the grace of God both now and forevermore. Amen. Happy face. Do this dance. <laughs> oh my god.